Hello, my name is Keith Williams. I'm a member of Glen Guy's Landscape Luminaries cohort in the Arcanum, and this video is my level 25 submission. The subject of the video is the art of composition. Now, I do apologize, I recorded this video using PowerPoint, and I know that it will have potentially some gaps and breaks between the slides, so again, my apologies for that. So what is the art of composition? Well, superficially, it's a placement of objects within the frame. But when we look at it in greater detail, there is far more that's involved in the art of composition than just the position of those objects. It includes things such as the color, tone or tonality, shape, space, and scale. The elements of design allow the photographer to influence the experience of the viewer beyond the subject matter by telling a story, a listing or enhancing an emotion, an emotion, or creating simplicity or order. In this video, we'll examine five elements of design, each illustrated with an example from the larger world of photography and with one of my own photos. The source of these images are listed at the end of this presentation. Mine are chosen not on merit, but as examples of particular elements of design. The five elements, of, the five elements that I'll be discussing are number one, viewpoint, balance, color and emotion, repetition and rhythm, and tone. So, Let's jump right in. Viewpoint. This first example is from Henri Cartier-Bresson, sometimes described as the father of photojournalism and the author of The Decisive Moment. Frozen in time, we see the man with the umbrella balletically leaping over the puddle. Behind him, the Eiffel Tower and the couple are they lovers to the right? In choosing this particular viewpoint close to the ground, Cartier-Bresson exercised his control over the image. When we look at the man leaping, he's the same size as the Eiffel Tower, creating a paradox that we resolve by creating a sense of depth and perspective. Shooting from this vantage point, he has the feature, Cartier-Bresson has the feature of the sky as a backdrop, creating silhouettes of the figures. Clearly, there are many elements of design within this example, but would it have worked if he'd taken the shot from eye level? The chosen viewpoint brings simplicity and clarity. I, and I, sh I should say here that the slides chosen are mine, uh, or in addition to mine, were chosen after I took my shots, not before. Now, you can be forgiven for thinking in this shot of mine that it is photoshopped, pixelated doc and dock links. However, it is actually part of a Lego sculpture exhibition at the Royal Botanical Gardens, very close to me here in Ontario. As with Cartier-Bresson's example, the low view viewpoint manipulates our sense of scale and perspective, bringing the center, the subject, the subject and subjects front and center. I think that this viewpoint also introduces a sense of motion that would be missing from a more traditional stance. As with all elements of design, there is a degree of subjectivity in their definition. The definition that I have found most appropriate here is that balance is the visual weight of elements within the frame. In this example by Matthew Gore, the key elements are the large rock in the foreground and its reflection in the pool, the crescent-shaped pool itself, and the pinnacles of rock to the right. Now clearly all of them are different sizes but they carry the same visual weight within the image. They're all important. And the way that they are arranged within the, the shot provides a sense of visual balance. In my example, the balance is again, well, sorry, my example here, again from the, the Royal Botanical Gardens, taken in winter, I believe there's also a, a clear sense of balance in here. 
the three key elements are the pair of chairs and the two trees behind them. Now, individually, they are distinct, but between them, there's a sense of balance within the frame. Moving on to color and emotion then. Now, color can create a whole suite of emotion and reactions from calm to shock and from happiness to fear. Edward Bertinsky's photo clearly and definitely provokes a reaction in this rendition of nipple tailings. The glowing orange-red can, in other circumstances, promote a sense of passion or even lust, but in this environmental aftermath, it is in stark contrast to the devastated bleak landscape. Can you imagine this photo in black and white? How can such a rich, passionate color be the product of destruction? So clearly, color is the key element within this. By contrast, my photos of peppers in the market in Venice, I believe is pure joy and happiness. The clear, bold colors almost sing with joy. It's remarkable, actually, that both photos contain almost the identical shade of orange, but generate such different reaction and emotion. Repetition and rhythm. Our brains seek order and pattern to make sense of the world. Keith Skelton's photo of the vineyard in Santa Barbara County, County draws out the repetition of the rows and vines in the undulating green almost to abstraction. There's a rhythm in the spacing that provides us with information on perspective and distance. Step back and squint a little, and there's a simple, elegant beauty in the repeating lines and color. Different, but the same elements of design in my shot of the spotted dog in Cortona, Italy. Not parallel lines this time, but rectangles within rectangles and repeated patterns. The stone door frame, the wooden door, the panels within the door, all within the metal frame of the, of the trellis, all patterns within patterns and repetition and rhythm. The ornamental railings and the plant pots, again, rhythm and pattern and repetition. Even the pattern of the stonework following the same theme of repetition and rhythm. Within these repeated patterns, the dog stands out as the one element not conforming to the geometry and color pattern by the set, set by the rest of the rhythm of the image. Tone. It would be hard to leave Ansel Adams out of any discussion on the element of design. His study of the Golden Gate headland from Lincoln Park in San Francisco is a masterclass in tone. He was an alchemist in printing his work, dodging and burning before Photoshop was ever contemplated. He did say that I had been able to realize the desired image, not the way the subject appeared in reality, but how it felt to me and how it must appear in the final print. In black and white, tone is everything. My final slide is of a sunset in the Tuscan countryside. I could have chosen colour as the element to discuss, but was elected for tone. The subtle differences in tone provide depth to the landscape. The hills retreat to the ridge behind which the sun is about to set. Without the changes in tone, we'd have a very two-dimensional image. The tone breathes life and interest into this photo. Well, thank you for listening to me, and that is the end of this presentation, and I will just Thank you very much.